Hey, Pastor Dave here with our evening devotional, Something Deeper. We're going to go to the Word and just look at something deeper today. I've seen a lot of people recently who've been bothered by scammers. And these they take all sorts of forms. One thing is robocalls. If you get robocalled by somebody that you don't have a relationship with, like they're your employer or your school or something like that, cold robocalls are illegal. So you know they're a scammer when you get those calls. If somebody tells you that you should go and buy a, a gift card, I know one friend, that's what they wanted him to do, and he uh, was almost scammed by these people. Uh, those gift cards are a good way for scammers to get money. So it's not always easy to tell because they take different paths. But I think one thing we can say is, anybody who says to you, I've got a sure thing. Here's a sure way to get rich. Here's a sure way to get this or that. Then you know it's probably a scam. Except for one, God can promise you a sure thing. That's what we're going to talk about today on Something Deeper. So today on Something Deeper, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and talk about a sure thing. Paul was writing to Corinthians, and this is the second letter that we have of him writing to them. The Corinth church had a lot of problems. And the first letter he ends with a promise to come and see them. And it seems that Paul wanted to go on his, on his missionary journey and go to Macedonia and then go down and visit Corinth. But it seems like his plans changed. It seems like there was a lot of trouble in Corinth. And so instead, he went directly to Corinth. And he had a short visit. It doesn't seem that it went well when you read these passages. He faced opposition. People were questioning his authority and his apostleship. And so it was a short visit. It didn't seem to go well. They were offended by his first letter that had some challenging things in it. And so Paul then went on to Macedonia. It seems that when he left, he thought he'd come back again and give them another chance to hear the grace that he wanted to give to them. Um, but it seems like he wasn't able to do that. So with that background, let me read you 2 Corinthians 1.15. Because I was confident of this, I wanted to visit you first so that you might benefit twice. I wanted to visit you on my way to Macedonia and to come back to you from Macedonia and then to have you send me on my way to Judea. Was I fickle when I intended to do this? Or do I make my plans in a worldly manner so that in the same breath I say both yes, yes, and no, no? But as surely as God is faithful, our message to you is not yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, by me and Silas and Timothy, was not yes and no, but in him it has always been yes. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him the Amen is spoken to us, spoken by us, to the glory of God. Paul is saying, you know, he's sorry he couldn't have come back after his first visit that didn't go well. So this letter is going to have to stand in his stead at that point. And, and yet he's saying, I didn't make that decision lightly. He said, I don't make a decision to say, oh, maybe I will and maybe I won't. I, I've known people that uh, if you invited them to do something and they said, oh, okay, maybe, that you knew it was always a no because they just didn't want to turn you down, but they didn't want to do it. Paul's saying, that's not what I was doing. I really intended to do this. Uh, I, I wasn't fickle in that. You can depend on my friendship. Even if I can't live up to the plans that I've made, you can still depend that I intend to do what I can to bless you and give you grace. And he said, but as surely as God is faithful, our message to you is not yes and no. So he takes his promise of faithfulness and he couches that in terms of the wider faithfulness of God. And isn't that wonderful that we can depend on his promises? Um, in him, 
It has always been yes. For now, no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. So we can depend on the promises of God. Uh, when somebody is lying on their deathbed and they're facing the ultimate question, you know, what comes next? Sometimes they want that assurance. You know, is, is what I've lived for my whole life is my hope that I've been waiting for on a firm foundation. And Paul says most emphatically, no matter how many promises God has given to you, no matter how, many, how great the promises are, they are always yes. In this life, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. If you have a bet that sounds like a sure thing, it's probably a scam. But when God says something, no matter how good it is, it might be the, and the, we have the best promises from God, they're still true. They're still yes. No matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. When we remember God's promises, we can say, Amen. Thank you, Father, for the promises you've given to us. Thank you even more that we can trust your promises. Help those who are really depending on them today, desperately going through the difficulties of life, holding on to the promises of better things. Help us to trust you more, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Good to be with you again. We love you. And you can be praying. We're, as, as I'm going to air this, it's going to be, we're going to be in our meeting for the executive board of the church. So pray for us as we seek to lead the church in God's path. God bless.